Hey guys, hope you're having a great day. Your old buddy Tim back with another excellent author interview for you. My guest today is Kat Stiles. Kat is uh, a prolific author of a couple of genres that I get a lot of email about. They are the young adult paranormal romance. That is a genre. And she's also uh, does a series of books called Modified in the Adult Urban Fantasy Genre. Now, I wanted to have Kat on the show because I do get a lot of questions about, hey, Tim, how do I write for young adult? How do I get into the paranormal. They're all very hot. How do I write? I want to meet too. Tim, can you help? Well, I can help along with the assistance of my guest today. Her name is Kat Stiles. Again, her information is down below, but give this a watch. Uh, really good interview. She talks a lot about, you know, the mindset that you have to get into to, to write for young adult and the things you have to do to serve that audience. It's very interesting. Hey, as always, if you like what I do on this show, make sure you click that subscribe button. Give us a like. And if you've got a comment, you'd like to ask a question or you have an idea for a future guest, do me a favor, drop that in the comments comments below. So uh, for now, let's get started. Here is my interview with author Kat Stiles, young adult paranormal romance and urban fantasy. Let's go. Hey, Kat, welcome to the program. Hi. Thank you for having me. You know, right off the bat, you win the award for best hair ever on oh, this you. show. <laughs> thank that's, you. That, that's what we call it. Here in Alabama, we call that mall hair because you go to the mall and that's where the beauty salons are. <laughs> it just reminds you, I'm from Jersey and they have pretty big hair there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Well, then you, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. We, it's the old mall hair. I love it. And so, Cat uh, uh, Styles, glad to have you on. You are going to talk about uh, a couple of things that I get a lot of uh, questions about on this program, young, writing for young adults, writing paranormal. Uh, before we dive in, though, give the audience just a really quick background on you. Okay. So, like I said, I am from Jersey. <laughs> I've been writing for, oh, so long. <laughs> Probably a good 10 <laughs> years, right? Um, it, with the first book, it always takes so long to get it out because mm -hmm. there's so many insecurities you have and everybody's telling you to do it one way and you, and you really don't get the hang of it until like the second or third, really. <laughs> yeah, you, you got to write those million words before you get the hang of it. <laughs> <laughs> or, or edit a million, right? <laughs> exactly. So have you, have you been writing uh, for, for 10 years or have you always been a writer? <sighs> you know, I think I actually wrote my first book in grade school. So, yeah. I mean, I've, I've always been into it. I've always been an avid reader. And writing just always came natural to me. I could do, well, when we had tests, I actually look forward to those essay questions. <laughs> I did too. You know what? I, I was really bad at math, but I killed in English. So, I had a, right? buddy, who, I had a buddy who was good at math. So, we would kind of, you know, help each other out, i.e. cheat. <laughs> uh, and uh, that's how I got through through school. So, um, when when did you uh, seriously start writing? When did it go from being a hobby to an actual uh, vocation, if you will? Oh, I guess I'm trying to think. It's been uh, at least two about two and a half years ago when I. But it was even before that when I first when I got my when I found my publisher for Connected. So uh, probably three or four years ago. Okay. So, so you're an old hand by now. If you've been doing it more than a year, you're an old hand. So, um, well, they, as I said before, you and I have, have talked before and, and the thing that, that brought you to my attention was I was on uh, Twitter one day and your, your most recent book, I think it was in the modified series popped up in the cover. I'm like, wow, that's just the coolest freaking cover. And I can see uh, some of it behind you there. So uh, I don't know. I don't want to just talk writing with you. I'm going to talk covers and all, all kinds of stuff. So uh, yeah, you, you write, uh, let, let's go back to the, the, the first book. What, when, when you decided to become a writer, you mentioned a publisher. Do you do uh, traditional publishing? Do you do self-publishing? Are you a hybrid? Where are you? I guess at this point I'm considered a hybrid, but well, I was for a little while, but what happened was my publisher went under. So mm. I became a self-publisher. As they are prone to do. Yeah. Yeah. It was a small, it was a small publisher, but I learned so much and I, I had the editor there 
and I learned a little bit about the industry, but it wasn't until I actually took the self-publishing dive that I really, really that was when the real education began yeah. <laughs> the marketing and everything else. So. <laughs> I, I love it. Every time I talk to a writer, they go, yeah, that's when the real education started. When I started doing it myself. Well, you, you've written a, a, a lot of books. How many books do you have in all? Uh, well, I have a, a five um, with the two YA and the three modifieds. Uh, Modified 3 just came out, and I, I have short stories and anthologies. I did a short story with Derek Murphy, so I've got um, a few. <laughs> They're shorter books, but. Um, well, what the, you've got the the now is it the is it young adult paranormal series that's connected, and then you've also yes. got what modified is the adult urban fantasy genre what the, what really attracted you to to those Do you, were you doing ya first i it's it's all about the superpowers honestly <laughs> i'm a superpower <laughs> oh, yeah? i think i read twilight and kind of thought wow this is cool you know we can write this for for teens and it would be so awesome and i didn't realize of course until i published that you know the market is so saturated with <laughs> ya <is> so <laughs> hard to break into right now yeah well it's it's kind of like when uh, you know when 50 shades came out that market was relatively open and now it's just really packed yeah. and and ya <laughs> is is a lot like that although man if you can strike it in in young adult you can really do incredibly well incredibly right. quickly so you were did, did you read in that genre or were you just attracted to it because of the marketability no, no, I, I did read in that genre. Like I said, I, I wrote, I, I, I read all the Twilight books. I liked them all except the last one. We won't talk about the last one. Um, <laughs> um, Divergent, uh, well, Hunger Games. I, I mean, I just kind of devoured them. I'm not really yeah. into dystopian, but the writing was good. And I mean, there was tension. It was just, it was fun. It was a little more fun. The dystopian is not really that fun. But yeah. like stuff like Twilight is <laughs> more fun because, you know, yeah. you get superpowers well, the, yeah. the the fantasy and the superpowers are it's it's just a more positive vibe than than the dystopian end of the world pit the kids against each other you know <laughs> i i'm with you i would rather go to a, a school dance with edward and what's her name than go uh you know fight monsters in a maze somewhere but exactly. again it's i think it's a good example of you've got a broad audience like ya but then within that broad audience you've got little niches where you can really carve out and, and write. Talk about the uh, the connected series. That is your young adult uh, young adult young adult <laughs> paranormal series. Tell us about that. Sure, uh, it's connected. Is about three teens who discover they have superpowers and have to work together to stop a telepathic serial killer. That's oh. the first. One. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, it's 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 a lot of fun. Like you said, superpowers are more fun. I try to keep my writing fun and light i mean there's seriousness to it of course but i i just i think you should be entertained i don't think you should be sad or depressed when you're you know? <laughs> yeah there's, an, there's, there's enough of that crap out there <laughs> <laughs> absolutely well is, is that what you you really like writing the the superpowers if you for example i write a lot of sci-fi and the one thing that i really like about it is if it doesn't exist i can just make it up Yes. You know, yes. and it's just so cool building these worlds. Is that how you were with this series? Yes. And I had to, I had to be really careful because, I mean, you have to follow your own rules. That was one of the things that some of the main uh, authors that I've read, they don't, they stop following their own rules in book three and four, mm -hmm. and then you get really ang angry. So <laughs> I had to go back and, and make sure, okay, am I keeping it, you know, uh, continue and kind of make sure it's, it's right because that that is something that's that's a big gotcha but yeah, yeah. no yeah. powers are fun and you know and that's the other thing and it's kind of a cheat like with um with with both of my both of my main characters both of my protagonists in both of the series can um one can read minds and one can sense emotions so that's how I get past the, the first person restrictive POV because <laughs> <laughs> they've got that power. So you yeah. can actually, you know, know the emotions of somebody else or you can know exactly what they're thinking. And it's, it's kind of fun to cheat that way, right? That, that, you know what? That's a really interesting perspective. And I haven't really thought of that before, but 
you know, I mean, a lot of people don't like writing from, you know, first person point of view because it can be somewhat restricted. But hey, if, if your hero or heroine is, uh, is a mind reader, uh, <laughs> that kind of breaks all the rules of, of nice. point of view. It is kind of so, nice. So the, uh, <laughs> you, you mentioned your, your hero. Now, do you write, are your heroes female or male primarily? They're female. Okay. Why, why is that? I always find that really interesting because I'm seeing that a lot, not just in YA Paranormal, but in sci-fi, uh, the, the readers, even the male readers, the old farts like me, uh, read all of these books that have a very strong female lead. Why, you have an opinion on why that might be? Are we just weird old men? I hope no. not. <laughs> <laughs> I think we are in the time of, of female, uh, female enlightenment, female, um, girl power right yeah. I think it's a very prevalent theme in everything i mean uh, my husband was just finishing mario odyssey and i hope this isn't a spoiler or anything but at the end princess peach doesn't want to marry Mary, mario she's just like no forget about it <laughs> well it's just that kind of thing that no. we are strong and it's women and it's we're just all the way go 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 so i mean that's what i'm seeing in in literature and movies everywhere else it's all girl empowerment kind of Theme. So I think that's probably what it has to do with. I know with YA, the majority of my readers are uh, females. Mm -hmm. They're female teens. Well, not, not really teens. Honestly, that, I thought that was really strange. But a lot of my readers are 40-something females. But they're still female. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you, it's kind of funny. You never know who your readers are going to be. A no. lot of times, you know, because you know, a, a lot of the you, you would think most of the sci-fi readers, like I said, are are guys like me and that demographic. But there are a lot of females that read uh, sci-fi, and I think there's a lot of guys that read the the YA. Now, you also mix some romance in with your books, right? I, I did with with Connected. Um, there is some romance in Modified, but it's not uh, traditional romance that yeah. you would think. So, uh, so you did the, the Connected series, that was the young adult paranormal romance, and then you did uh, Modified, which is an adult urban fantasy. And one of the things I was looking at your website, and there's a great disclaimer on there about Modified. You know, if you're, if you're easily offended by cussing and adult situations, for the love of God, don't read this book. I thought yes. it was, that was just the perfect <laughs> disclaimer. I'm going to put that on everything now uh, because I actually did get a bad review once because I use the F word a lot in a book and you can imagine yeah. what my response was. So let's talk about the, uh, tell us about the modified series. It is adult urban fantasy. Yes. So that's a, a little edgier. Like you mentioned, there's, there's a lot of cursing. There's uh, kind of sexual situations. It's more adult but it's, what's funny is that it's almost the same subset of powers because I just like certain powers and I gravitate towards them. Mm -hmm. It's set in the future, it's set in New Jersey, so I, that's where I'm from. And it was fun to kind of to mention some of the things in Jersey and to think about what would be different in the future. But she's just, the, the heroine is very snarky. She's got this weird uh, sidekick kind of friend who's, who looks like an anime um, <laughs> girl, and it's, it's it's just fun and weird and uh, very sarcastic and and biting, and it's just it's kind of like it's kind of like I'm I'm just like I, I actually dedicated the series to Jerseyans because I just wanted to tap into my old Jersey because I felt so restricted with YA. Yeah. I mean, I didn't feel like I could really curse. I felt like you know, I can't really get it too hot because then, you know, it gets into a different category mm -hmm. and I just felt like my hands were tied. Mm -hmm. And so modified is the result of saying, okay, I want to curse. I want to have a little bit of sexiness. <laughs> I want to have more adult kind of themes and, and I want to maybe complain about IT a little bit in my writing. <laughs> that's, that's the other thing that I do. So, I mean, it's like all of my life is out there in my books. Mm -hmm. And talk, and talk, yeah, talk, you, you, hit a, you hit a very interesting point. Talk a little bit more about that because the difference in audience uh, between YA and adult urban fantasy or sci-fi or whatever, uh, you, you really do have to write within the parameters of that genre. You're not going to write YA and all, you know, you could slip some cussing in, but you're not going to have, you know, the kind of heat or steam you would get out of a, you know, an erotic romance. You're not necessarily going to have the level of violence. Uh, talk a little bit about writing 
you know, to, to the audience. You've got to know what the audience expects before you can deliver a book they will read, right? Absolutely. So, I mean, it, it's good to know your target audience or what you think your target audience will be, right? Uh, a lot of, and in fact, I don't, I think modified is actually appealing more to men than women because, because of, of the level of, of cussing, because of the violence, because it's, it's a snarky anti, anti-hero kind of female. So, yeah. um, I, you know, I think, I think it's good to have at least, if not an audience, but a certain person in mind to say, okay, I'm writing this book for this person. This is the kind of person that would read it, you know, mm-hmm. and that kind of gives you an idea of who your audience would be. Yeah, and it also drives everything. I'm looking behind you at the covers of some of your books, and I can see, you know, the ones uh, to to that side are more, you know, you got the young girls, the NSA, and then you got that damn modified cover there, Kat, that <laughs> caught my eye, I got to tell you. And, yeah. and immediately the cover of that one, you, you, you can tell it's going to be a little different than the covers of, of the Connected series. So really everything you do from, from writing to cover design to marketing, you really have to know who your audience is and how to target them. And you, you hit the nail on the head with that cover, Kat, I got to tell you. <laughs> well, and that's, I actually told him, uh, the, the artist, I said, I want, I want people to know when they look at this cover, it's not YA. It should be obvious by the cover. Right. Yeah. I, I love that artist. Is that, is that Jasper that did that? Yes. Yeah, what, it just, what's his last name, Wu? Uh, you, I guess. Is you, how you, okay. It. It's why yeah. you. Well, I've noticed the, and, and I'll put a link below to your website where folks can go and look at those covers. To me, at first, I thought it was a graphic novel. I know, I know. I, which I love. <laughs> I love graphic novels. Have you, have you actually thought about turning these books into graphic novels and making Jasper oh. draw? I, if, I could, if I could draw and I could, I mean, I would do it myself because yeah. modified especially lends itself to being a graphic novel. Yeah. And I, I could, honestly, when I do the print version, because I'm probably going to bundle after I get to volume five, I'm probably going to bundle them together and do a print version. I'm going to have him do additional uh, illustrations in there, not yeah. graphic novel. But honestly, if I were to, if I were to hire him to do a whole novel like that, I think it would be wildly expensive. Yes, <laughs> but boy, it would be cool. <laughs> it would be, it would yeah. be. That's why I'm saving it for the print version. I'll at least do like an illustration at each chapter beginning and maybe a couple of little ones throughout. Because yeah. I think that's just more fun to read. Yeah, it's just so cool. Now, let's talk a little bit more about the Modified series because these are, correct me if I'm wrong, they're actually shorter books in a series, almost like episodic TV, if you will. Is that, is that what they are? A short exactly. book series? Yes. What, what, what drove you to do that rather than the, the usual, you know, 100,000 word kind of thing? Well, I just thought it, the, the way, the language and the kind of scenes that I'm doing, I just thought it would be, it kind of lends itself to, to being a serial type series. And I thought maybe pricing them at 99 cents each would, would get people to, to at least try it. And mm-hmm. then, you know, they go along in the series if they wanted it because committing you know, $5 to a book by an unknown author can be a a little steep for people, even though, you know, they, they spend $10 on an ebook from a a traditionally published person. Right. Yeah. Still. (laughs) Yeah. They'll they'll pony up for James Patterson, you know, but they'll, they'll complain about a 99 cent book. But I I really like that though, because I know, I know a lot of writers now are uh, taking that approach. And again, I call it episodic. It's like, it's like TV shows. You get a, uh, for example, uh, Scott, and I'm going blank on his last name, he does like 13 books a season. And they're all, you know, short 30, 40, 50 page episodes of an overarching, uh, overarching story that begins here and ends with book 13 or whatever. Is that, is that the same kind of thing? Do your books, uh, are they a continuation or are they all just one, one at a time? No, it's more of a continuation. Okay. I don't even barely recap, you know, because I'm just like, if you didn't read the one before, I'm sorry if you're lost. This is what this is. It's a series. Right. <laughs> yeah. Which is a great way to sell books though. You know, it's yeah. the old, uh, I mean, you're not old enough to me. And, and actually I'm not that old, but the old pulp fiction books, the, uh, you know, where they would come out once a month and uh, it would be uh, just a couple of chapters. And then you had to wait a month for the, for the next <laughs> one. Oh my God. Grow up in Madison, Alabama with those books and uh, you'll, you'll be glad you're in Jersey. Let me, 
I'm telling you. Uh, so what, <laughs> writing in, in YA and adult urban, uh, what advice can you offer the audience? Because again, I get a lot of folks asking about uh, these genres and, and, you know, best practices and how to get started, that sort of thing. Uh, what, what advice would you give someone who said, okay, how do I get started writing YA? Okay. I, I guess the best advice always is to read, uh, mm. read the genre that you want to write in. I mean, look at the top 20, look at the, um, and some of this, I think I'm regurgitating from one of Chris Fox's books, but, um, you know, I mean, look at what's selling and, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of see who the indies are, see what, what is selling and, um, do it from there. If you want to write to market, if you don't, then just at least know the kind of rules, right? What, what people expect. If you've got a, a female protagonist, uh, she's, she's got to win the day at the end, right? right? You can't have her boyfriend save her, right? <laughs> so, I mean, just kind of know some of the basic rules uh, of YA. And I know there's a lot of really funny mm -hmm. websites that talk about all the, the I, I remember a cartoon where they talk about the dystopian YA, and it's just, there's so many of those around. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, you, you mentioned Chris Fox and his, his book, Right to Market, I thought was very good. And one of the things that, that Chris writes about, of course, are the different tropes that work right. within your, your genre. And tropes is, is just what's, what's the hook, what's expected in, in this kind of story. And if you go against the grain, you're going to tick the reader off more than anything. Yes. And your goal is to, to hook that reader. So um, now that you're doing self-publishing, I guess like everybody else, you have figured out that, that writing is actually just a little bitty bit of the overall business. How, how does that set with you? Writing is the easy part. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I wish it was just writing, you know, <laughs> even editing. I think you know, every, every step that I took in, in this whole process, I thought, okay, the hard part's over, right? So mm -hmm. I'd write the book. And I, at the end, and there's so many pages and, and whatever. So, okay, that's done. And then I realized that I have to edit the whole thing, like seriously edit it and, and learn how to write in editing, right? Because <laughs> you really do. I mean, that's when you yeah. learn how to write. Mm -hmm. And then I got the editing done. I was like, okay, it's ready. And then I realized, oh my gosh, I have to market this. And I know nothing about marketing. I'm IT, somewhat introverted. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, it's, it's, it's all, that's, I mean, you, you never stop learning, right? And, and yeah. marketing, especially there's, it keeps changing. It's evolving every day. I know I'm, I'm doing a whole series on book marketing with a guy that that is his job. That's all he does is market books for other authors. And I'm like, buddy, be better you than me. You know, I, I'm with you. I like to write. <laughs> I don't mind editing. The, the marketing just makes my old head hurt. It just, I'm like, wow, Facebook ads, what's, what the hell does that mean? So what, what is your uh, uh, process? Are you, uh, are you a pantser or do you write from an outline? Do you know the whole story going in? What's, how does Kat uh, write these books? <laughs> well, I think I was more of a pantser on Connected, but mm. when I got to Imminence, I had read some more books. That's the other thing I do a lot of reading is a lot of nonfiction reading. That's another thing I would tell new writers is to, to get, a few of the higher recommended nonfiction writing books so you know what's going on. Um, right. Outlining, I think, is important because I think it's good to have an idea of where you're going. Um, I've recently read more outline books, so I think I'm going to go into a heavier outline. But even with Modified, I have written notes of, of the scenes. And it's just mm -hmm. like like one or two lines for each scene to say exactly what's going on. And then, and then I write it out. Um, because otherwise, I'll just kind of flitter off into nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> You'll end up writing in a corner. That's what I do a lot. I, you know, I do, I do a lot of outlining, but I do it really loosely because the yeah. thing with me that I found is as I'm, as I'm writing, if I try to stick too closely to an outline, you know, it, it really can be stifling to the characters. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm a firm believer in letting the characters uh, write the story. Do you, do you self edit or do you send out to an editor before you go to print? Uh, so with Connected and Imminence, I did use an editor, and with Modified, the first one I did, but then cost, it became cost prohibitive. So I have a couple of beta readers that are very, very good yeah. and the, help me with the editing. So You know, a lot of times a good beta reader is better than a good editor, and I'm a good editor, and I can say that. <laughs> So, you know, because I think the thing is the beta readers read with the eye of a fan or the eye of a, you know, someone who knows a lot about that genre. Editing is, it's very technical. 
you know, I edit dozens and dozens of books every year. And, you know, I, I have a hard time following the story because I'm just looking for things to, to put a red line. to. So <laughs> I'm a, I'm an old, I, I'm the worst self editor in, in the world. So, well, what, uh, when, when you write a series like modified where you've got multiple books, do you know that entire story going in or is it you write one and then you figure out what's going to happen next or next? Or do you know, do you start with the end in mind as they say? No, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm kind of just going with the flow with this one. Um, I, I know, I think I know who <clears throat> she eventually wants to get with. But like you said, with the outlining, I, I did the outline for Modified Volume 3. And I ended up going with a totally different way at the mm -hmm. end. So, I mean, I'm just going to kind of uh, see see where it takes me kind of deal. Because like you said, the characters, the characters, like, you feel like you're insane. There's people talking in your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these voices but in your head. They're, they're going to go where they want to go, right? So, yeah, yeah what, I can't really do anything about that. What, uh, what are, who are some of your favorite authors? What, what do you like to read? Oddly enough, I like to read horror. <laughs> do you really? Yeah, I do. Clive Barker is probably my favorite horror writer, although Stephen King is amazing as well. Um, I, need, I, need a, <laughs> I need a Clive Barker screensaver, don't I? <laughs> um. I guess I, I love Joseph Heller's Catch Twenty Two though. I like existential oh, fiction as well. So Catch Twenty Two, I love the book. Boy, it's a, it's a hard book to read though. You know what I mean? Because what Heller wrote that was in in the sixties or and yeah. it just kind of a yeah. I I just I, I screw it. I'll watch the movie. I can't I can't follow along. Well, the movie follows the book pretty closely. Yeah, I love the book. It it just the way that he wrote it. It was and I think the reason why it resonated with me was because. My ex-husband was in the military at the time when I read it. Mm. And you think that it's just fantastical. You think that everything he's saying is just absurd. Yeah. But it's not. It's yeah. real. It's really like that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I loved it so much because all the crazy stuff that was happening in that book was like uh, very similar to the crazy stuff that I was seeing, you know, mm -hmm. the military mm -hmm. base and everything else. I just thought he was so funny. And I actually... One of the lines in, in Modified is a throwback to Catch-22. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it was a tribute to Catch-22. That I, think that's, I, I think that's I think that's great. You and I are the, probably the only people that know what Catch-22 is now. It's kind of, kind no, of sad. Yeah, someone <laughs> asked me, well, someone asked me the other day what, what my favorite book was. Catcher in the Rye is my absolute favorite book. It, it has nothing to do with being pretentious at cocktail parties. I just like that damn book. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I, you would be amazed that people go, what catcher in the, is that a baseball book? And I'm like, yeah, it's a baseball <laughs> book. Get, get the hell out of my, out of my face. So what, uh, you, you like to read horror. Are you uh, ever thinking about writing something in that genre? Yes. Yes, I am. Actually, my next project is going to be a horror comedy because we don't ah. have enough of those in the world. Boy, that's true. We have enough. We have enough horrors that turn out being comedic. But uh, is it? Can you give us? A, is there a little uh, hint? Is are we talking monsters? Are we talking clowns that live in the sewer? What? A, no, what I, I like. I like the the like. I guess some of my favorite horror movies are like Halloween mm. and even um, Friday the Thirteenth. Uh, you know, ah. as horrible as the sequels were. Yeah. <laughs> But well, you I know, love, if they, they I, weren't high art, cat. <laughs> no, no, I know. But th that was that was a wonderful, mm. glorious Bihar. And I yeah. love that. Well, some of the best memories I had are watching those kind of movies with my with my mother. She was really into horror, too. Oh, and she, she had, like, all the Leprechaun movies. She was into the really bad stuff. Oh, wow. <laughs> I remember. Oh, those were terrible. <laughs> they, were, they, were, they were, but they were wonderful at the same time. I mean, there, there's such joy in those movies. There really is. And I don't know if I'm the only one who sees that, but the book is actually centered around that. Uh, there's a, a stalker, right? And mm -hmm. it, there's layers to it because it, it can't just be, you know, straight out horror. It's, it's comedy because it's uh, a, a woman and a man who starred in all of these movies and they're doing oh. one final movie and they have to, um, you know, people start dying, so they have to figure out what's going on. And it looks like you know, the killings are being done by the guy and all of that, you know. It's just so cool. Now, what, what adjustments are you going to have to make mentally to go from writing young adult romance to writing that kind of book? Yeah, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> <laughs> 
here, here's where we're going to see your talent really flourish. I oh, think, right. so. No, I, I'm doing research first. I have like two or three books that are in the top 20 horror comedy from Indies and I'm going mm. to read those and I'm going to see what all is working for them and just kind of adapt that. Cause yeah. Yeah, I have to, I can't do the same thing. <laughs> yeah. There, no. There's, there are some really good ones out there. Have you ever read the Dexter series, the books that the, uh, the show was based on? Um, no, I haven't read the, the books. Yeah, the, book, the books are very, very different from the series, but but really uh, very entertaining, very funny. You know, he was basically a serial killer who worked as a, you know, worked for the police. And uh, yeah, right. the books were much funnier than the series. So you might want to check those out. Oh, okay. uh, Kat, wrapping up things here, a um, lot of good information. Your advice to, to authors out there who are, uh, they may be writing in the same genre as you are, but they're just trying to get some traction, get things going. A um, little pep talk for these folks. Uh, hang in there, right? Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't always happen at the same time for everyone. I know you hear these stories about Stephanie Meyer, for example, like she spent six months on it, sent it out, and she was an overnight success. And then I think J.K. Rowling's experience is probably closer to the truth, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think for every Stephanie Meyer, there's probably two million uh, me's and, you know, folks like that. So, you know, right. it's the same way with uh, Andy Weir, who wrote The Martian. You know, first book, hit it big. And then, but Andy had this, oh shit minute after all that happened. He's like, what, what do I do now? And of course, you know, it's, <laughs> it's worked out very well for him. So, uh, Kat, if folks want to know more about you and your work, where should they go? Catstyles.com. Very good. And we'll put, uh, we'll put links to everything. Make sure you go to Cat Style, especially if you're an old white guy like me and look for the modified covers because it's worth <laughs> Worth the visit. <laughs> Kat, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, as soon as you've got something new coming, uh, let me know. We'll get you back on. Okay, thank you. Appreciate awesome. it.